Hi and welcome to program 27 in this series of programs and tutorials that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com and I will be happy to email you when I create new tutorials or release new programs. Now, program 27 is designed to look for divergence between price and MACD. So let me just define what I uh, meaning by that. What the program does is looks for a pivot in price or in MACD and then finds a roughly concurrent pivot in the other one. So for example, if it finds a pivot in price, it then looks for a pivot in MACD and vice versa. And those pivots have to occur within a user-defined input of each other. And I'll explain that in a moment. And then what the program does is stores the information about those pivots, the bar numbers they occurred at, or rather the bar number the price pivot occurred at, and the value of the price pivot and the, uh, the MACD pivot. And then it compares it with a user-defined number of previous pivots to see if there has been divergence. So we're talking about regular divergence. So, for example, if we were looking for bullish divergence, that would imply that price made a lower low and the MACD made a higher low. And if we were looking for bearish divergence, that would imp imply that price had made a higher high and divergence had made a, or rather the MACD had made a lower high. Another thing I've done in the program is made it so you can select the MACD that you're interested in comparing with the price. So for example, if we look at the E-mini chart here and you look at the bottom, you'll see that we've got a uh, MACD indicator, which is included in this program. At the bottom the red line is the macd itself the blue line is an exponential average of the uh, macd line and then the yellow histogram is the difference between these two lines and you can use any of the, either of these uh, lines or any of the three of the lines to calculate divergence um, you have the option to uh, to choose that so let's just have a look uh, at an example here and you can see that uh, we've got a little jumble of lines here and uh, what's happened is we've found a new price pivot here and uh, we've then compared that with several of the other previous price pivots because in our input we've got a setting of five which means we compare we have a array the size of five and uh, we're storing five pivot amounts in that the uh, the current pivot and then the four previous ones in this case it's a uh, one two, three, and four. Uh, you can change that. So let's just uh, first of all look at the inputs. And what I'm going to do, I'm uh, going to show you this apply to a chart, also radar screen, and uh, it can also be used with the scanner. So we'll look at each of those in turn. And uh, first of all, with the, uh, the chart, um, here are the inputs. The maximum array size, this just determines how many previous pivot points we look at. So if you only wanted to look at one um, previous pivot point, then you just make the array equal to two and uh, and so on. The maximum you can have there is five. Which MACD? One being the ordinary MACD, two being the exponential average of that MACD, and uh, three being the uh, histogram values. MACD price, C, MACD length, fast length and slow length. These are just standard inputs to the MACD indicator. Then lower color and upper color. These determine the colors of those lines that are drawn on the chart. Uh, they don't have any effect in radar screen or scanner. Left strength and right strength. These determine the strength of the pivots. So if a left strength is equal to three, that means there have to be three bars um, that are rather three lows in this case that have to be higher than the low of the pivot on the left hand side and two lows that have to be higher than the low of the pivot on the right hand side. Bar tolerance, this is the thing that I was just mentioning a few moments ago in terms of whether we accept the price pivot and the MACD pivot as being concurrent and uh, what this is saying is they have to be less than three bars apart for them to be seen as concurrent. You can change that. And then price L and price H, these are the, uh, the prices that we use in the, uh, the pivot to determine price pivots. You can also, with this, change the, the color of the MACD drawn at the bottom of the chart. So, for example, in this case, the uh, average might be better being drawn as white. It's difficult to see against the, uh, the blue background. 
So that's the program applied to a chart. Now let's look at it applied to radar screen. And it's uh, very similar apart from we just need to be careful about the settings. Now, the first thing to be sure of is that I've um, I've linked this radar screen to a chart. And what you do need to make sure is that your inputs are the same between the radar screen and the chart. Otherwise, you're going to confuse yourself. So the first thing we need to do is just go Format Analysis Techniques and All Analysis Techniques. And I'm just going to double click on the and I'm going to double click on Program 27. Now, I've turned off the update value intra bar just to try and save the computer doing too much processing. But uh, you could put that on if you like. What I've done um, importantly here is that we've got load additional data because the MACD is an, an accumulative calculation. You can find out more details by clicking on the details. We've loaded 200 bars there. Um, as I mentioned, the inputs must be the same between here and the chart if you're going to see consistent results. And I've set alerts. Now, this doesn't work on charts, but it does work on the radar screen. And uh, what I've done, I've said enable alert, and I've just set it once per bar. And uh, when we go back to the radar screen, you'll notice that we've got these little white corners here. That is because we've got the alert set up on the uh, radar screen. And uh, if we just go through the chart, you'll see a few cases where it's telling us that there has been a divergence. And uh, if this was running live, you would have got an alert. What we can do is just click on the symbol. And then since I've linked it to a chart, you'll now be able to see the divergence having occurred on the chart. You'll notice it's not the most recent bar because obviously there has to be a certain number of pivot bars after the, uh, the pivot. And also bear in mind that the pivot could occur more recently on the MACD. And remember, there's the uh, that little bar tolerance that we were mentioning a few moments ago. So that's uh, the chart and radar screen. OK, so let's finally go to scanner. And uh, you can apply this to scanner to scan a series of instruments. And uh, you can see here that we've got the uh, value telling us true in this case we've got a bearish divergence and uh, what I wanted to do is just uh, remove this from the scanner and just show you how you would go about setting up with the scanner so what you do is click to insert a new scan we'll give it a name um, program 27 bearish spelt correctly Next, the first thing we have to do is tell it what symbols we want to scan. So I'm just going to look here. Let's just do um, index components and uh, we'll just go for the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm going to say next. Now in the criteria, we click this little arrow here and we select indicator. OK, we find program 27. We say OK. And uh, then what we need to do is just make sure that we can see the uh, for example, the bearish. You could choose either bearish or bullish and uh, display that. If you want to see both, then we need to apply the um, indicator again in uh, another scan. And uh, what's the important thing now, though, is we just click the plus, and uh, here are the settings. Again, if we want to see a consistency between the chart and the scanner, make sure that these settings are the same. And particularly here, you need to make sure the interval's the same. So I'm just going to change that to five. I'm going to leave that as auto detect and load additional bars 200 for the same reason that we need to load additional bars in radar screen. And uh, having done that, we can press finish. We could uh, double click on this and we could set a schedule if we wish to. And uh, the only other thing that you might wish to do is just to increase the timeout. If you look at scanner references, I've got this set at the, uh, the highest value this uh, program is doing quite a lot of uh, processing so if I were to click on this now and uh, press run we'll see the scan begin to uh, to happen okay so it's not showing any divergences there at the moment but uh, obviously you could set this as a regular uh, scheduled event and uh, see if any divergences or potential divergences take place OK, so um, I hope you might find this program useful. And uh, what I'm going to do is, if you do decide to download the program, 
I'm going to include an additional video which will just go through and try and explain at a relatively high level how the program is working and that might be useful to you uh, in your own programming work. So thank you very much.